fellow watchers and enjoyers. Piggy, hi, that's me, yes, hello. And Ash, say hello. Hello. Uh, we are here from Watching Walford. We are here to bring you a classic edition of Watching Walford. This is going to be a new series that's hopefully airing after Love Island. If it's not, whoopsie daisy, blame <laughs> Ash, because they, like Futurama, we aired <laughs> it out of order. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, this is supposed to be taking place after Love Island. This will be a podcast that will come out every two weeks. So, because we're not going to be able to do this every week because there will be weeks where we're like, no, as much as I love Willy, no, <laughs> I, I, I can't look at his face. I can't look at him. But yeah, what 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 is this, basically? What is classic EastEnders? Basically, I haven't seen early years of EastEnders. Ash, I think, has only seen 1985 and maybe of the 90s, maybe a little bit of the 90s and uh, 2000s. I mean, have not you? honestly, I have pretty much seen, I've seen about six months of 1985 and otherwise it's mostly just like current watching that I've done. So yeah, it's like, we'll, we'll reach a point in the series where for, for now, I at least somewhat know what's going on, but like at some point it's going to be like, oh fuck, this is all new to me. <laughs> um. So yeah, we are basically going to try um, and go through EastEnders. What? Well, of course, EastEnders. We're hardly going to say, well, we're going to be doing EastEnders and then go to Carnation Street. <laughs> um, if you're wondering why I'm talking a bit fast, I've just had a Coppenberg, so leave me alone. Um, yeah, um, anyways, what will we be doing here? I will be leading this because this was my idea. Um, this, Ash basically, this was the original concept, basically, of... Watching Walford was going to be the classic podcast, and we'd basically say modern EastEnders sucks, woo <laughs> classic EastEnders. Yeah, bring out some those, uh, purists out there. So, oh, fucking hate modern EastEnders. Oh, mate, honestly, yeah. Uh, just hop in. Yeah, this was originally the idea of the channel back in about, I think it may have been mid 2022. I was feeling a bit lost. And, you know, when I'm lost, I'd make a YouTube channel, which is probably not. <laughs> probably why i am the way i am uh but you know started going because obviously i found the uh, brookside episodes um we like, can say that website because it's shut down now yeah exactly you um obviously i found that and i'm like oh my f fucking god i can i can just watch a lot of classic eastenders and then watch like 70 episodes in the span of about two weeks and just never touched it ever since <laughs> um obviously um, because of Brookside being gone, ha, um, right, I don't know how to explain this. Basically, look at this like lost media. Um, EastEnders was basically all there at one point on a website. Yes. And then basically, people archived some of it and just went, ah, I'll be here forever. And then went, oh, bollocks, it's gone. So, okay. like, we have, we have all of 85 to 89, 1990. We do not. 1990 has been lost. Half it's been lost. <laughs> the time and space. Yeah, but so, I mean, um, in theory, eventually, you know, if we are, if this does become uh, financially viable, we can probably just buy a USB stick that has all the episodes on because people do sell that for a, for a fairly pretty penny. So, yeah. But I love how they're saying it's up to date and it's like up to 2023, January. Not up to date, <laughs> is it? Not up to date. But yeah, um what major things happened in nineteen eighty five? Of course, Bowling for Soup released their song nineteen eighty five. Um so. oh, came out in the year two thousand and four. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get it in there. Um yeah, um I don't know what was charting the charts. This is right before or just about to take place. WrestleMania one is about to take place. Oh um which it's around this time i don't know the exact date it's either february or march because they used to do wrestlemania in march and then for some reason they went april is the month but like if you watch the first 20 20 years i think they do in march most of them are in march um the main event of that one i think is piper and orton bob orton not randy orton versus hulk hogan and mr t yeah where muhammad ali is the referee and 
cultural milestone that is. It is. Uh, famously, like a, yeah. Famously, Cindy Lauper was on WrestleMania. I don't know who else was on it. I definitely know had he survived 1984. Um, fucking uh, Andy Kaufman would have been on yes. it because, and um, even if you don't watch wrestling and you think it's silly, you, I, I, I advise you go back and watch Andy Kaufman and wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, a, a, it's a lot of where comedy wrestling kind of came from, really. Uh, except in the modern day, it's become a bit more like uh, a bit more meta, a bit more like mm -hmm. <laughs> funny wrestler. But th this is not wrestling, this is extended, but I just wanted to bring it up because wrestling in one is literally like in hindsight, it is arguably like um, a milestone in wrestling because it just showed that Vince knew how to run that business and WCW, despite being a second best company, you know, it's like your friend who just copies everything you do. They just <laughs> went, yeah, we'll do this. And then in 2000, they just went, fuck it, I don't know, have the stings be set on fire and throw them off a stage. And that killed WCW. Yeah, well, yeah, I anyways. suppose to, to not digress, Piggy, uh, which episodes will we be viewing and what um, are the storylines? Be, we will be doing the, oh, the 19th of February, isn't it? The 19th uh, is the first one. I believe so, yeah. The 19th of February, which um, I will give a brief synopsis in a second, um, to the 28th of February. Now, you may be wondering, hmm, that seems a bit weird. Um, yeah, um, EastEnders, classically, classic EastEnders used to be on a schedule because soaps back then, I don't know were they making money. They probably were, but they weren't as sustainable as now. Yeah, it was you know a lot I mean. more of a gamble back in the day. Because mm -hmm. obviously, where, where the, there was always like TV soaps that always did fairly well. Uh, but obviously the biggest example of the largest soap is Coronation Street, which started out in the 60s. Um, and even that was a gamble at the time. Because, uh, you know, there, there, there's a whole documentary talking about the like story behind Coronation Street and the... Uh, like craters fairly well known but uh yeah it's always basically the the reason eastenders started is because tony holland and i believe it's julia smith yeah julia smith uh they obviously they saw the success of, of uh coronation street and wanted to Hollywood. capture this for like bbc um there was specifically a show that they were like they worked on a show together and that's where this partnership started but obviously, they'd start to conceive the idea. They start to conceive the, like, 24 original characters, which we will do some filler content on on the side, um, where we basically introduce these characters, because <laughs> as much as we'd like to spend a metric buttload of time kind of going into the detail of every single character, there's only so much time in the week, and we're also doing normal uh, EastEnders stuff. So, yeah um it's it's very interesting to read uh it's all told in, in eastenders like an untold story or something uh it's a big like book you can get it in hardback i got it for about like two quid um where it goes into the details of how the show was conceptualized and like who they imagined because i don't exactly have a great uh memory of it currently uh, one of the best stories in it is telling them how they found the character of Ethel. Is yeah. that they found a lot of like West End, like East End pubs, um, obviously, and in some of them they just saw this woman who like who like smoke in one hand, drink in the other, like dog like dog in a handbag, just like smoking, just chugging pints, and just like setting the world to rights. Obviously. This wouldn't fly nowadays because of health regulations. Yeah. But um, funny, like I can bring this up because it's kind of related to the eighties. Um, I think in Galway there's a pub that was like used in a film. Yeah. And basically, there's this bloke who brings his donkey into the pub. All right. <laughs> so, so like you're having a pint and you just have a donkey in your face. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Bit strange, I'll be honest. <laughs> what? I said a bit strange, but you know what? Tweets are own. 
and I think like a man brings his like giant like German shepherd into the pub, like you you still see it in rural Ireland. You wouldn't see it in like Dublin. But like it, it's the same in England. You wouldn't see it in mainstay England. Yeah, you yeah. You go the countryside. Oh, bar it's with these, like, just moonshine. completely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, as much as, as uh, we like this, as suppose, much as we like to say, <laughs> it's oh, also. I just I want to get this out because it's funny. Um, obviously, uh, basically, I I I hear a bunch about some like. No, see, because I I, I watch I, I watch a game called Counter Strike, and there's a lot of different nationalities. Um. But, you know, that means I've heard a lot of, like, different sayings from, like, different places. And one of my favorite, like, Serbian, uh, like, phrases essentially, <laughs> essentially coins to, if the donkey's stuck in the mud, fuck it. Um, <laughs> which is absolutely unreasonable. Um, but that point being, you know, if the opportunity's there, seize it. And it's just one of my favorite phrases from around the world here we are um as i was saying um obviously again you go to the rural areas of england ireland probably germany i don't know but ireland and england and i do love that phrase by the way but i just want to finish up on this point um obviously if you go to the rural, they're they're like 20 years behind like like how we're behind on chinese technology they're behind just on a different planet <laughs> they're still in the 80s though. they're still watching classic standards oh of course I, mate, they think it's still coming out oh, bloody hell I've seen, I've seen Lou Beale for the last 40 years <laughs> uh. they don't know what pointless is it's fucking <laughs> pointless um, <laughs> um, but yeah I do love that phrase though if the donkey's stuck in the mud fuck it Um so perfect obviously it depends if it's a shaved or an unshaved but uh, I don't think. yes uh should we get into the storylines that we're going to be talking about yeah and um, as for, without further ado let's get into the storylines i said a do not a jew i know my accent makes it sound like say a jew but i i, I swear on it <laughs> say i do but yeah the four main topics are the death and aftermath of reg cox we'll get on to reggie in a second the Golden Circle, which we'll also get onto it, is the start of a pyramid scheme. Although it's not called a pyramid scheme, but it is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Pauline Fowler is pregnant with Martin Fowler, but Lou Beale doesn't approve. And there's something wrong with Den and Angie. The smaller storylines are Luffy's introduction to the show and Tony Carpenter's introduction to the show. And Nick Cotton. Who's just, he's just Nick Cotton. Um, yeah, he's just an outright bloody knobhead, isn't he? That's his job. Who is he? He's a villain. Through and through. Um, now, you may be wondering where, because I'm going to sound like Bobby Fish, where's Dot Cotton? You may be asking. She's not in it. No, she <laughs> doesn't come in. She doesn't come in for like uh, at least another seven, eight months. We won't be talking about Dot until like mid-November 1985. It is quite funny because obviously she's still mentioned um, throughout. But, you know, Nick still mentions her. Everybody still mentions Dot. Everybody knows who she is. Um, and I'm pretty sure I read that when conceived to, like, actually play the character, um, it says, although Dot had been referred to since the very first episode uh, of the pro... Maybe not first episode of the program as, as the mother of villain Nick Cotton, she did not actually appear until episode 40 in July 1985. Um, so, yeah. I sent just to say, uh, she was originally supposed to be there for three months, which is absolutely ridiculous knowing what we know now, knowing that she stayed <laughs> and is or was the longest running EastEnders character in history. Uh and behind Ian Beale, I'd assume. Uh, yeah, I think Ian's uh, just kind of won it out over the fact that he's just not dead. Sorry, Jim um, Brown. Incredible woman. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, we will get into the pet. Well, not the pettiness, but you, you will find out. We will tell stories 
um, behind the scenes for some of these episodes. Like, obviously, the famous one being Dirty Den's arc, like, to where where we have um, washed Den to Dirty <laughs> Den, but then, fuck you, you're not getting this character. What do you mean I'm not getting the character? Fuck you, that's why. And he gets killed off. Um, that's basically what happened in 1989. They just went, we want the character. You can't have the character, but we want it. But do you know what I want? What? A pistol. <laughs> and I killed him. Uh. Until until someone in 2003 went, you know, it'd be funny if we brought him back. But we will hopefully cover the weirdness of classic EastEnders from the 80s, 90s, and maybe 2000s. But definitely the 80s and maybe the early 90s. Well, let's just say well, one one episode at a time right now. <laughs> yeah, one episode at a time. So, but we... I, I, plan, I, I plan to run this for at least another two to three years. Because, sure. like... Because, um... I understand we're not talking about the storylines, but this is the pilot episode, basically. So I'll get you a pistol. How about that? Mm. Um, and basically, this has always been an idea for me. But we're not here for that. We'll talk about this afterwards. So who is Reg Cox? Well, I will give you the brief synopsis of the first ever scene in EastEnders. We get the classic intro that everyone knows. We get the duff, duff, duff. And then... Do, 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 do. Obviously. And then... The, we see a foot go through a door. Dan has kicked in a door. Why is he kicked in a door? Well, certain certain man called Reggie Cox... Well, his name's just Reg. But I call him Reggie. Me and him are homies. Um, <laughs> basically, Reg Cox... Um, we don't know whose killer is. And you may ask... When will we find out when the killer is? And Ash will briefly tell you when we will find <laughs> out when he's killed. Uh, well, just you wait till we cover the show till about 2015, where it is so, finally revealed who is the killer. Despite as will as like as will come to know, the show knows who the killer is. They decide very quickly on, but they never actually like fully go through with it. So. That's, it's just a funny little tidbit. It's kind of ridiculous. And basically, we don't know who killed Reg Cox. Um, obviously, if someone went back in time and went, uh, Nick killed him, then it would be revealed. Um, so yeah, we basically see the aftermath of that, where, where the residents are not scared, but they wonder why someone would do such a thing. And a side note to this, I don't know if you loved it, but I loved Arthur. I think it was Arthur. Where, like, where um, Dan has just ran in. He's got Dr. Leg. Pauline is pregnant. I think it's Pauline. Yeah, there's so many names. Pauline is pregnant. He runs in. And then we cut back to Arthur, who's just like, oh, that smells nice. Chugs it. <laughs> yeah, oh, he chugs like, <laughs> oh, honestly, uh, like I said, about 35 years on, they, I believe it was 30 years, 35. Mate, it could have been 30 years on. But they, they reenacted this scene. Um, they reenacted the scene where Den kicks the door in. Uh, Den goes, oh, but he smells an ear. And then Ali says something. And then uh, Arthur obviously does that. Uh, they, they redid it with... Ah, uh... oh, bollocks. I've forgotten who the final one is. They did it with Martin... Um... They did it with Martin and Kush. I know that for sure. But I unfortunately cannot remember who the final one is. Well, who do you know the person who died in the chair audition? Uh, well, it's it's Nick. So. Oh, Nick Cotton. All right. Yes. Uh, because. Oh, how? Yeah, yeah. Look at this. I remember when it was. It must have been 2015, because 2016, they were in the Peggy era, like, where Peggy was being killed off, which is one of the most, uh, in oh, my they opinion. did it with Stacy instead. Uh, it was Kush, Stacy, and Martin. There we are. Yeah. Well, I thought what, you meant... Hmm? Well, they reenact the scene fully. Um, it was pretty... It's a fun little callback, but regardless, um, we get to see the kind of characterization... Uh, Ali is a Turkish, uh, I, I assume, immigrant. 
um, you know, is the uh, is a, a cabbie, but also owns the restaurant with his wife Sue. You have Arthur, who, well, Arthur is particularly a coward. Uh, I do agree. It didn't to find me to see him like just chug that bottle. It's like he's dead. He's dead. Why are you chugging this bottle, man? And obviously, Den, you know, the like cult of personality, the like strong, like lead as such. Because EastEnders has. They've never necessarily had a main character, but you can definitely see the errors in which they had a favorite character. And Den, for sure, is yeah, the okay. favorite. Basically, going back to my point, we will find out in 89, but it just shows how much they love Den. The original writers loved Den. Because they were like, you're literally not getting this character. This is our character. <laughs> Fuck off. And, um, and they were like, we just want we just want to mess with his hair. And they're like, you can't mess with him. He's mine. <laughs> and they're just like, I just want to pick his ear. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. And the aftermath, just to get into it a bit more. The aftermath, you have the, the uh, detective. Uh, I think, I don't know if the, the actor's name is Nick Barry or something. Uh, don't know. I don't remember why I know that. Um, <laughs> uh, and obviously, he starts to like look around and kind of quiz, like, ah, oh, so who is actually a suspect? And obviously, who are the suspects in Reg Cox's um, uh, killing? Um, obviously, nearly all the men on the square. <laughs> yes. Um, it's basically all of the men. I oh, suppose the there are probably three in particular, and it's quite funny to see how it is. Because obviously it, Nick is suspect number one. As we'll come to see, Nick's involved in some slightly dodgy stuff. And, you know, everybody knows that he's a villain, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, the other suspect is Tony Carpenter. And I'm not saying it's a bit of racial profiling, but it's definitely a bit of racial profiling. It is the 80s, like. Yeah, I um, will. I will um, mutter my favorite line that Lou Deal says in a second. But go <laughs> on. And the final suspect is the uh, obviously Ali Osman, the uh, Turk, as Nick likes to call him. Um, and obviously the aftermath of this sent shockwaves. And obviously we have I forget the actor's name who runs. Not the actor's name. The character who runs the like shop. Um, uh, Saeed. And name her. Right. So obviously there's a scene where um Ethel, Willie, Lou Beale and Saeed are looking on and then Lou's like, Terrible world we live in now. You can't even be safe in your own home, basically. And yeah. Ethel's like, I just wanna have a look and then she runs into the pub. Uh. That, that I love that. I love how Ethel was like, Right, I've got a work to go to. Well, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going into the pub. Yeah, um, like she 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 had to know what was going on though. Yeah, uh, we will. You will like if you just listen to us. I would definitely recommend you look into Ethel's history, or like just seeing she's in, because we might be biased. Because obviously there's a well, I'm definitely biased because it's a pug, but um, Ethel is just a sweetheart. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Ethel is one of the all-time classic EastEnders characters, for sure. Like, yeah. she she embodies what the show's supposed to be. She's nosy, she's loud, but, you know, she's still, like, smiling and laughing a lot. She was one of the first real, like, comedy characters, but, like, she's just... She just oozes personality. Um, and, like, a brief spoiler, it's been 20 years, so... Well, 23 years, so I'll get over it. Um, one of the saddest deaths, in my opinion, like, where, where like, you will find out in the year, when we get to the year 2000, but, like, it's one of the saddest deaths ever where she's just in the bed and Dot's like, I can't do it. And Ethel's like, I'm in pain. Please, I'm in pain. And it, it, it fucking makes me cry. I'm nearly crying now just remembering it. <laughs> it's, it's fucking depressing. It's, it's so tragic, Ethel's death. But let's not spend too much time on it. Just know that there will be many tears shed <laughs> if yeah, we ever get fine. to it. 
oh, it's again. For, at least we got to meet Willie again. I don't know when Willie leaves the show, actually. No idea. We'll find out when Willie leaves the show. Uh, apparently, his uh, apparently it was getting too rough for him, so he, he had to leave. Oh, great hanging stuff, great him. stuff. Thank great you, stuff. Thank you. But, yeah, this is why I hosted. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the aftermath of Reg Cox. We like kind of see the fallout of like him being killed. I think his flat is now the Taylor's flat, but uh, yes. that doesn't really that doesn't really come into it. People are like, "Why are you bringing up the Taylor's?" It's just a fun trivia fact. Yes, like it'll probably be asked on a pub quiz. <laughs> Well, was right. who who lives in Reg Cox's flat now? Uh, who the or something fuck like is that. Reg Cox like? It's either that or it's um, who's the first character to be killed on EastEnders? I know the answer. Do you know the answer? I do. What's the answer? You have to wait and see. Um, but yeah. Is, is that all you want to talk about of the death and aftermath of Reg Cox? Yeah, I'd say so. You? It's mostly just the fact that most of the men must be investigated. Tony Carpenter, um, like a like a like a like a a big a big black man from the Caribbean, I believe. Um, but you know, like a builder doing up like his own flat on the square, bought it and wants to make it ha- like like habitable. Um, uh, Mark Fowler Jr. I say Jr. He is Mark Fowler. I lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mark Fowler. Uh, because he's a bit of like a wayward son, you know, he's a bit like in crime, Nick Cotton and Ali Osman. So, yeah, good to go. Yeah, um, obviously, I'll get back to it. I'll leave the golden circle to last. Um, I, I, no, I'd say we, I'd say we do it in the order that it said. Kind of ramp okay, up um, to the to the key okay um up next is the golden circle uh the start of not a pyramid screen i don't know what you're on about it's not a pyramid screen 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 um yeah what what is the golden circle well basically so i'll describe it in modern ways basically i donate a tenor i mail that off and then i have to give a tenor to the man on top who is ash and then I get my money back when I eventually become at the top of that list. <laughs> you can see how it's not a pyramid screen. You can see. But it's, yeah. Um, it, it's a really interesting thing because, you know, it's the 80s. Everybody's skin. You know, like nobody's nobody's like making money. So mm-hmm. it's like, oh, just just 10 pound and then, then I can get 10 pound back. It's like, oh. It's just really funny. Obviously, this affects some of the like poorer members of the square. See, so Sue and Ali go for it. Uh, Lofty goes for it, and uh, Ethel. Ethel does as well. It's a uh, it's an interesting point because you mentioned the Golden Circle, and it's like they really they they really start doing a pyramid scheme. <laughs> and yes, yes, they did. Honestly, um, just quite funny, really. Uh, yeah, it is quite funny. Um, obviously, this start when I, I, I'll always forget his name. Um, in the cafe, the two characters will yeah. ask, will probably shout, shout the names out. <laughs> Sue and Tony. To- no, it's not Tony. Is it not? No, the, the, the other white guy who works in the cafe. What, Ali? Yeah, it's him and Sue who basically say, yeah, it's a, well, not a pyramid scheme. You just put 10 quid in. Um, obviously, Tony Carpenter obviously goes, no, no, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm, no, it's fucking stupid, lads. He doesn't say it like that, but he, he basically implies it. I want to have um, this note. Also, you say white, but he is Turkish. Yeah. So, uh... Well, <laughs> Well, you know, well, maybe let's well, not. Well, I, I, I was looking at an old grainy 340 p footage, like four <laughs> pixels. He was white to me, and then four pixels. Like you know what I mean? That's 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 how retro I have it. Oh, that's just none of this uh, HD show. Correct. Uh, the record is such. 
um, carry on, carry on. Yeah. Um, basically, Sue and I've got already forgotten Ali. his name. Ali basically go, yeah, we'll sign up. Uh, they convince Lochte, who then brings it to the pub, where uh, it's an amazing scene where he's trying to convince Ethel and Lou Beale. I think it's Lou. Yeah. Because I, I think Lou's in that scene is what I meant to say. He's trying to convince them to, to sign up to this pyramid screen, scheme. And Angie's like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. it no, don't. <laughs> and Dan's like, it's a scheme. It's a scheme. He's basically like, it's a scheme. But like, Ethel's like, I'm skinned. I, I, I can't. I can't. And Luft, you can pay me back. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically the pyramid scheme. Yeah, uh, and the, the uh, punchline is that uh, Ethel, Ethel gets Lofty's tenor and does not send it off to the Golden Circle at all. <laughs> Get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Cheers for the tenor. Hey, <laughs> you ball bag. Fantastic stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I, I guess at this point, can I introduce Lofty, if that's all right? Yeah, yeah, introduce Lofty. Um, Lofty is seen. He's not in the first two episodes. I think he's in the third episode. Yeah. Um, of the show, we basically see Lofty. He um he knocks on Ethel's door. You currently think, who is this blonde spastic? Like, who is he? Um, I shouldn't have said that word, but <laughs> yeah, we're right. gonna get cancelled anyway. Um, who is this blonde twat? I should say. Lovely. Um, who is he? It's lofty, um, you know, in like my opinion. Shaggy head, yeah. like on the doll, kind of hopeless, but like not. Like he's he's not he, he's not a bad guy at no. all. Like he, but he is just kind of in a massive rut. Like he's working he, for working for the pub, but not on the record. You know, he's getting doll money. But he can't really afford anything, you know. He's just kind of—he's he, lovable, really. He's just really lovable. His old Lofty. I do think Lofty could have been in the show for years and years, or at least somewhat in the early '90s, not the late '90s, because there was a tone, of, just like media, like um, actual media, where there was a tone shift in the late '90s. Oh yeah. Uh, he wouldn't have fit in the late '90s. Because you had all the hard lads like Billy. Um, I mean, was he Sid another Owen. character who uh, left around like 88, 89? Yeah, I believe so. I believe he wanted to go into acting. Like He's like most of the actors who went, this show yeah. is not taken off. It's going in the dump. And then, have you ever seen the... Um, what's, what's his name? Oh, what the fuck's his name? Have you ever seen the Danny DeFito meme? Where he sat there, his face is wide open, and he's like tears comes out of his eyes. Yeah, yeah. That's basically most of the East Enders actors went. Like, oh, I could have made a <laughs> lot of money. <laughs> yeah, because obviously a lot of the characters, when it was changed hands, like uh, Tony Holland and the Julia Smith, obviously left in '99. So that kind of left for a, a lot of the '89. Yeah. I kind of left for a lot of the characters to decide, like, oh, maybe we should just go because, you know, we don't know how big it's going to be. And, you know, so many characters who are just like, oh, fuck, God, God damn it. <laughs> it's, I should have just believed. <laughs> um, obviously, like, most of them either get killed off or come back in, like, 20, to the, in the early 2000s, late 2010s. Yeah. Like, lofty, like, um, do you want to know how significant Lofty was to me? Oh. I remember the episode they announced that he's coming back. I remember recording that on Sky and watching <laughs> it over and over again. Like, I only knew Lofty from the pilot. Well, not yeah. the pilot, but I seen an episode he was in. Yeah. And I watched about four scenes, and I was like, I love Lofty. Like... Yeah, he's just a, a down on the down on, on his luck, kind of. You know, so he, he, he finds himself in funny situations. Like... I suppose just to keep on with the uh, with the story of the show, on the first day's episode, uh, obviously we're getting to a bit later, but Den and Angie have a party to try and schmooze old uh, Mister Chumley, who is a like brewery like guy. I don't remember his specific title, but you know, 
um, and ends up that Lofty ends up being hit on by both Sharon and Angie and even like gets kissed by both of them. And he's no, just kind of Sharon. Sorry. Uh, they were they were practically pressed together. Um but you know, it's it's just it's really funny to think that Lofty somehow ends up accidentally like <laughs> nearly snogging both of the Watts girls, you know? Um obviously if people want to compare characters like they always do when they bring in new characters they always compare them to all characters but we'll see it in the 90s where people will compare phil to dan and then to the 2000s when uh, another character comes in and compare them to phil yes or when dan came back i guess you could say they compared them to phil um just uh, if you want a modern comparison it's reese he's literally <laughs> he is the 1980s reese he's not He's not dressed like Reese, obviously, and he doesn't have the balding hair. He's a little less socially awkward than Reese, but he's yeah. not that far away from it either. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> like if they were writing Lofty today, he would be Reese. Like basically it. That's basically it. Um, I do love Lofty. I do do generally wish half of the actors who left in the eighties. I went, this is not going to succeed. I do wish half of them stayed. Oh, for sure. Because, although, I I do feel like... um, It's just, it's a... I suppose, sorry to cut you off, but it's... Because it's obviously in the 80s, and bringing back out from the 80s, the show was technically larger in the 80s, but, like, you know, how much was it really? Like, how many people are going to remember characters from the 80s? And that's kind of a sad thing. Like, we wouldn't remember half these characters if we weren't going back and watching them. No. But it definitely, I will say, it feels like, obviously, it brought back a lot more characters from the 90s, of course. You know, a lot of people watch that. But the 80s never really, never really gets that treatment. And no. if they do, it's for like a one-off episode. Again, Lofty and Barry the Punk. Yeah. Who's not in this episode. She's in the next episode, Spider. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, what, what I was going to say, it's... But I felt like, I basically describe it like this. How I feel it went down is, you know when they were changing writers? Yes. It's basically when two children are in the same room and they have their own toys, right? Yep. And then two of them throw a pissy fit. And like, no, you can't have my, you can't have my, um, um, Optimus Prime. Well, I want your fucking Optimus Prime. Give me it. And they're like, no, it's mine. You can't have it. And uh, they get it and then they just go, they do the bang and break it over their knee and like, ha ha, how is your tie now? That's yeah, what I feel I like mean, it, it was always going to be been. awkward because first they were going to a nine into the 90s, which, you know, is a, di a different time, of course. Like, you know, 80s kids are much different than 90s kids, you know, like that's it's a much different time. New directors, the first new like producers that you've been that you've had, you know, you probably got a good rapport with the current writers. So, you know, it was a bit it was a big risk to do, but. Well, let's not spend too much talking about this. We have four no. more years to go. Um, but yeah, it, it, like it is scummy. I do want to say scummy, like how the original writers, I think, were treated, if I am remembering correctly. Like, like the stuff they wanted to do on the BBC were like, well, I know you basically met us, but <laughs> who produces it? All right, it's the <laughs> best fucking person I know. I know, me. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, but who's writing it? No, no, the question is not who's writing it. The question is who's putting money into it? And they're like, <laughs> it's basically like the modern writer strike. Like, the BBC did not care about them. <laughs> no, no, and they what? went, you're not taking our best characters. But yeah, uh, Lofty, yeah. good character. Great to see him and lo looking to see more of what he does on the square. Obviously, we'll move on now, if that's fine. We'll yes. see you, Lofty, in about 10 minutes. Um, Pauline Fowler is pregnant with Martin Fowler, but Lou doesn't know, approve. We shouldn't really call him Martin Fowler, because at this point, we don't know his name. Yeah. He's just um, he's just a fetus. Well, it's point. honestly, the reason I've done that is it's just really funny to think of so many people being like, That's Martin! Jesus! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just absolutely losing their mind. You know, Martin Fowler's grown up now. He's like, what, 30, late 30s now? He's yeah. the same year as EastEnders, so he would be 35. 38. 
Oh, 38, sorry. 38. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> how has that happened? Oh, um, uh, but yeah, I suppose that's just the thing. Do you want to get into, uh, well, I suppose I'll, I'll set up how they, uh, how they find out. Obviously, uh, Den goes to Harold Leg, the doctor, you know, another classic Senders character. Wasn't there for too long, but you know, like the, the doctor of the square. Um, obviously he bumps into there. Pauline's currently having an appointment and essentially we learn that, uh, Pauline is pregnant. Uh, and why is that an issue? I mean, well, first, Pauline's mum is Lou Beale, who is the quintessential, like, soap battle axe, you know? Mm -hmm. She lived through the war. She doesn't fucking care if she annoys you. Like, she's just doing what she wants. Uh, like, just yells at everyone, has very strong opinions, you know... Any of the, like, older characters who are much frostier, like Shirley definitely had took a lot from Lou Beale. Uh, Pauline grew into Lou Beale in the end, which was tremendous. Um, so, and I suppose the other bit is, obviously, Arthur is unemployed. Um, yeah. Arthur, Arthur Fowler, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have a job. And... Well, he never, he doesn't really have much success. He's rather work shy. He doesn't really like to work. And that's why Lou is so like, you can't have a baby without any money coming in. And like, he's not staying here. There's not enough room. So yeah, do you want to carry on with that thought? Um, basically, like, um, cause people always look at the 80s like, oh, it was a great time. The amount of sex, weed, cocaine done <laughs> was amazing. But in reality, I think the 80s is more like the 2020s. Like, well, less politically correct. But like, even though it was politically correct at the time, uh, let's just admit that it was at the time. Yeah, I mean, it was just every generation moment. is politically correct. It just changes throughout the decades. Um, like, like the 80s, like it's a depressing time. Margaret Thatcher has just shut down the coal mines. Yeah, actually, like, good point. Like you said, like the the mines have been shut down. We are in the like depths of like Thatcher's England, you know. Which you know for the for the like more wealthier people on the square, that's fine. You know, notice how Pete and Kathy they're they're doing just fine. They've got no issues living. They're actually living quite a nice life. But you know, Arthur who would have been working in the factories, or other characters would be working in the mines. Like they're skint. They don't have any work. They don't. They can't get any consistent work anymore. And it's a great point that kind of reminded me, like, just how much we see, like, how kind of, how terrible conditions were, like, of the East End at the time. Like, look mm -hmm. at Reg's flat. It's absolutely filthy. There's mold all the way up the walls. It's just, it's grotesque. Um, and it kind of shows the, the conditions of, like, the lower class. Uh, but yeah, great, yeah, great point, mate. Great point. Like, obviously, people, because, like, the 80s might be great in America, but over here in England and Ireland, like, Ireland was still, like, I understand this test back to England. Why are you talking about Ireland? I'm Irish, that's why. <laughs> obviously, in Ireland, like, we were still, I understand it was the 1920s when we got our freedom, but we were still struggling to be a country independent, like modern-day Britain trying to be independent. Um just a little politic there for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, Ireland was struggling, England was struggling because Thatcher, like, had a, I don't want to say a grip, but she did have quite a grip. Her hands were she firmly had a around England. vice grip on the lower, on the lower class. <laughs> she had a vice grip on them bollocks. Like, she, <laughs> no, not only was she squeezing, she was not squeezing, she was tickling, squeezing, and pulling them at the same time. <laughs> it's triple. Like, like, people look back at the 80s and go, wow, amazing time. No, no, it, no, it, no, it's not. Like, I mean, it's so funny to think that, like, obviously, like, my family, like, if the mines were still open, I would have been a miner. You probably would have been a miner. Like, you know, it's what, it's just what the lower class did. It was a source of income. You didn't really live too long, so you didn't have to worry about much. So, you know, you worked out in the mines and you went to the pub. That's all you did. Sense of community. 
and and also in the eighties, much men will be depressed because like people always go, well, modern men are just are not men, and it's like no, modern men are not like the people in the eighties who were like, Meg, I'm so depressed, I want to put a shotgun in my mouth and pull the trigger, like I just can't live with it. They could they couldn't express their feelings because that was too woke in the time. Men don't express well, their on. feelings. That's... <laughs> let's not use term that might evoke that kind of thing. It's not. Let's not say woke. Let's say it wasn't a. It wasn't a cultural standard. Obviously, mm-hmm. men had been through the war. They thought they'd fought and won in the war. You know, like there was a lot of like untapped. Like you didn't really get to the. Uh, you didn't really get to the core of any, anybody's issues. Um, because mm-hmm. why? Well, you know, you're men. You just, just deal with it. Um. So yeah, and obviously it's something that will kind of a lot of this will be reflected in Arthur Fowler as a character as it goes on, because you know, like it's hard. All right, you can't get work, but you still need to provide for your family. That's got to take its toll. Like obviously, people go, "Well, the war was a great time. That was when men were men." Yeah. I think a man, like being a man, putting a bullet in another man's head, which he doesn't want to do, makes a man a man. <laughs> no, I think you're wrong, sister. I'm just as much as a man if I'm in a dress. Let's be honest. Like, because that, that is, the, I understand that we shouldn't be talking about war, but this is the 80s. We're still pretty much affected by the war. Like, yeah, I mean, they're still dealing with the aftermath, really. Like, like Jesus, if you put a bullet in someone's head because they're thinking the wrong opinion, like, it will take a toll on you. Like, and I don't care what any man says. Wars are stupid. There shouldn't be wars, but idiots like to have wars. And we all suffer because of it, because idiots can't be men and be like, well, actually, here's the problem. So, yeah, fuck them. And fuck you, Thatcher. You fucking <laughs> um, Yeah, I suppose just to kind of... Obviously, uh, Pauline and Arthur try to get Lou on side. But as I said before, Lou isn't having any of it and is not keen and decides she's not going to have, like, there will not, this kid will not be born under my roof. And a lot of the first week is them trying to kind of try to get her on side, which, you know, will be as expected, particularly difficult. Do you know, do you know what shocked me? Because I don't know when Pauline gets um, killed. Like 2006. Um, 2006, right? She looks so different in the 2000s than oh, the 80s. Oh, it's so ridiculous. Like, she looks like a completely different actress. Like, because my dad was telling me, like, son was killed on the Christmas tree. And, like, I was like, yeah, well, that's probably your memory being, like... No, no. Obviously, because you grew up with these things. Like, he was born in the 70s. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I thought, oh, he must be mixing someone's death. No. But, like, he showed me the scene where Pauline gets hit basically she yeah. looks so different oh, like even ridiculous. in the 90s even in the 90s she looks fucking like between the 80s 90s and 2000s she looks so different <laughs> not many actresses look different throughout three decades but yeah. jesus <laughs> i'm not saying it was a bad upgrade it was a great upgrade but it's just so weird when you see well, her. it's just interesting to see like how like how she went and such yeah obviously 2006 is like uh 21 years, years of, yeah 20, 21 like, years I'm away going, yeah you know like if she's um, on the show and she was 40 that's she's now 60 like that's a whole that's pretty much that's, that's some people's like lifetimes right there um, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. What, what else what else is on the list today biggie uh does she, is this the week that Lou gets her holiday, but she refuses? Uh, no, that's uh, that's the next episode that we haven't seen yet. Sorry, lads, for the spoiler. I I watched episode five because I thought we were doing episode two of the five, but actually, I went, no, we're doing episode one to four. And she went, all right. Um, but yeah, uh, she doesn't approve. Lou, Lou's like your hard knocks granny. She doesn't approve. Um, I like they tried to win her over with. I suppose just to say, she is reasonable. Like, mm-hmm. it, is, it is quite unreasonable to decide. Yeah, let's have a kid, but, like, there's no money coming in, and we're already crowded. She is in the Me right. Who, 
me moving over to England next year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, carry on. Uh, you're saying, sorry. But like they try to win her over with fruit. Um, Arthur tries to win her over with a painting. I think a painting. Uh, no, it's just some chocolates with some fancy box art. Oh, right. Um, and basically, the, he said some. I believe. Um, oh, what's the man's name? Kathy's husband at the time. Pete. Pete. I believe Pete's like, uh, don't buy your toffees, you can't chew them. And yeah. it just buckled me. Yeah. Because, uh, funny story, um, do you know all them toffee chocolates that, like, you get? They're like, in, uh, oh. They have an orange box and it's like toffee chocolate. Uh, oh, I gotta know, but I actually can't picture it right now. Basically, um, because it always reminds me of this story I had these toffee chocolates and I was walking the streets of Dublin and people people who obviously live in Ireland will know Dublin like the homeless people crime, like the not crime rate the homeless rate is like massive up there yeah like like it, it is massive everywhere but people are like fuck them and you're like yeah but you should be housing them anyways that's different Um, basically the, I was holding these chocolate toffees and I went up to this lady and I went, I don't have any money, I'm sorry, but would you like a chocolate? And she went, I've got no teeth. And <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and she showed me her her mouth like, and it was just all gums, no teeth. And I was like, oh, sorry. So it's not <laughs> sorry, she ate one in her face. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> There's only one person who's done that to you. And that's that. What are you eating, cow? Um, I would have been about 10 at the time, maybe 12. But yeah, it just always reminds me of that. Yes. Like, I love I love when you get old and like the future generation are like, what will we get granddad? Get him toffees. But he can't chew them. Yeah, but it's just a noise. Oh, just sucking it, granddad. Go on. Like, we're all going to be at that stage at some point. <laughs> where we'll have no teeth and we'll just be... Oh, doing god. that oh god oh, like, i can't like, you, have, <laughs> you, you have to admit like, like you, you your granny is still alive you have to admit it is funny seeing them like oh my sweet. honestly she she's kind of she she's gone the way around where she's almost you know how when babies taste something sour <laughs> my nan does that she's 84 <laughs> like anything sour just oh <laughs> It, it buckles me every time. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like you're 84, why are you re why are you reacting like a baby to this? Oh, uh, fucking you know. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah, like don't we we don't we don't ever get a chewy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because like we'll all hit that certain point where we can't use our teeth, and. Um, even people who brush their teeth, like, there will come a stage where you can't use your teeth. Yeah, of course. Um, it's just funny, like, and people, even people without teeth will admit it is funny. When you can't, when all you can do is just suck on the food, you can't really chew it. And people have to work around you for having no teeth. Yes. Like, it, it buckles me all the time seeing someone with no teeth try and chew. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's like, um... Oh, what are the dog called? Oh, it's, you know the dogs from Monopoly. Uh, no, you don't. Uh, um, no. A, po a PEI dog. Um, Charme puppy. I think it's a Charme. I no idea what this is. It's like a Charme puppy when they chew when they chew like peaches or oranges. Like, uh, every, drool just comes down their face. <laughs> Like foam starts coming out of their mouth. It's just brilliant. Right. If you have a grand, if you have a grand, give her a toffee, and <laughs> just, I just sit there and don't laugh at her because she just make herself conscious. Just, just go home and have a laugh afterwards. But yeah, um, they try and convince um Lou Beale with fruit. Um, I believe she throws the fruit bag at, back at Pete. P <laughs> yeah, which. It's buckled me. She she was thrown off her breakfast because they were talking about the baby, and she was like, "Don't want this, Lou. You're like 85. Calm down, love." I think she's 80. She's in her 80s. 
groups. It has to be. If not her 80s, or 70s, or 60s. Because life expectancy in the 80s was... Yeah, much lower. Much lower. Um, so yeah, we obviously see like Lou... Like, we see Lou fighting the system. And they can't reason with her. Which I understand from both perspectives. Yes. If you're literally having a baby, but you can't sustain it, yeah. then what's the point of having a baby? But yeah. Um, anyways, let's move on to... There's something wrong with Den and Angie. Oh no, we'll actually go on to Tony Carpenter's introduction to the show. So what did you think of his introduction? Um, I mean, there wasn't too much going on. Uh, obviously, he he's quite a... I suppose I'll just say that as a, as a whole because we haven't gotten much to go from, so I'll just go from like actual like knowing more. Uh, Tony is a strong kind of like he 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 is a smart character, but uh, he 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 has he has a certain he has some trouble, um, which he just can't really get himself out of. Um, but obviously Tony, uh, being on the show, uh, he will introduce us to his son, Kelvin, eventually when he comes onto the square. Um, but he's just, uh, he's a very strong, like kind of hardworking grafter type character. That's why I describe Tony. Uh, he's obviously trying to always get work and, you know, trying to like keep a roof over his head. So he is like the everyman. That's how I describe him. How how dare did you find Tony? Hello. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, how would I describe Tony? Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was just off in my own world thinking of <laughs> Annie's chewing on sweets now. Um, but Tony, from what I see, he reminds me of a show. He reminds me of a character from F is for Family. Um, okay. I can't remember the character's name, but he was basically uh, a lower class black guy in the 70s. Post Vietnam War, I want to say. Yeah, it was yeah. post Vietnam War. He just reminds me of him, but he's a jolly. Oh, it's like my old social worker race, the jolly, fat black guy. The most <laughs> kind people in the world. <laughs> like, they're I strong folks. Yeah, They're strong like, fuckers, but don't come across them. Do not mess with, like, as a as an example, don't mess with Tony Carpenter because mm-hmm. he's had to um, work to get where he is. So don't you don't you even try. And plus, and plus, if you want to dig even deeper into the eighties, don't forget this is also when like, um, the we're still like black I people mean, are still trying to get rights, um, or they probably have rights, but point in the 80s but it's not like up to standard it's not like it's not like they're no longer it's not like because they have rights they're not discriminated against you know yeah they're still discriminated against um everyone's just up everyone's ass because they're like we don't like immigrants we don't like black people all we like is straight white males and women um but yeah that's basically like you think you had a rough in the war Imagine being a black guy in the war and like basically fighting, fighting your way through the war and then like being told, look, you're lower than me, but I'm lower class, but you're lower than me. And then being told, well, it's the 80s. Remember what I said about you? I still mean it, but let's have a point. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it's basically... uh, oh, like, you know, he has, to, he has to struggle to get whatever he like wants, you know. He had to work hard to get where he is. So there's that level of privilege that isn't necessarily there. Um But yeah, let's not let's not uh, dwell on that too much. What is the next topic, Biggie? Nick Cotton, which I it's just written down here as Nick Cotton. <laughs> yeah. Um He's Nick Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, obviously he... So, since I have a much stronger angle than you, obviously he's introduced as the villain. You know, he's the bad guy so far. You know, people go, oh, I wonder who didn't Reg Cox. And people kind of go, oh, it probably wasn't it Cotton, wasn't it? You know, like he hangs out with dodgy people. 
to all of the minorities in the square, like uh, Saeed and Neymar, you know, just like said something like, yeah, well, you know, this might, this might work in Punjab. And it's like, all right. Uh, you know, obviously calls Ali a stupid Turk um, and kind of just doesn't really respect Tony either. So we'll come to see, this will obviously come to a head in a storyline. But yeah, like he's racist, he's like a con man, you know, he's a villain and he's out for himself. That's how Nick is in the first episode. He's got the snake tattoo on his neck, like he's got the slicked back greasy hair, you know. Do you know that? Do you know that snake tattoo? Yeah. Was that a real tattoo that he had? I feel, I feel like it was. But I was going to make a joke basically saying that's a real man. Fucking right there. Real man. Um, I'm obviously joking. Uh, let's not dwell on Nick Cotton. You're all here for anyone can fall in love. Not released yet, but <laughs> anyone can fall in love. And it's Dan and Angie. There is something wrong with them. Do you want me to tell you what's wrong with them? What is wrong with them? Well, see, <laughs> Dan and Angie have what they call in the business. A loveless marriage. Um, Angie is a hopeless romantic and hopes that one day Den will finally go, you know, Angie, I do love you. But Den's just out here, like, obviously, him on the phone, he's speaking to his mistress, I believe it's like Jan. Um, and yeah, they are a superficial couple. They put on an act in front of the bar, but fundamentally, that, 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 let's be honest, they haven't had sex in years. Like you know, it, like it's a loveless marriage. They're together for Sharon and the pub and the pub. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, basically, this will culminate in a year's time. Like this storyline will be built throughout 1985 and 86. Um, I mean, we can't really call him Dirty Den yet because he's just cleaned Den at this point. I mean, point. he's still fairly dirty. He's still having an affair. Yeah, but like... He's still cheating he's on his wife that he, that she, who loves him. Yeah, but like, we all do that. Like, <laughs> But, you know, you know he, obviously Den is, Den is characterised, as we said before, he is like, he's pretty much the main character. He is like you know kind of like respectable but a bit of like there's a bit of a naughty side there um like you can't really read him you can't tell if he's telling the truth either it's not all above board with dead and mm -hmm. angie is like a big massive flirt and like she's a lot of fun but as i said before angie's main uh angie's main downfall is den because she just really wants her to love him. Or she really wants him to love her, rather. And essentially, yeah. they both play games with each other, really. Like, obviously, uh, Angie kisses Lofty at the uh, party. Um, and it's like, Den's angry, but he's not angry because his wife has kissed another man. He's angry because it makes him look bad in front of everybody else. How did you find Den and Angie? Um, it's so weird seeing them in the early stages because you can tell that she really does want to love Den, but he doesn't want to love her. Yeah, and obviously you can see the... Uh, you can see why... Basically, if you know what happens to Angie, which, you know, we've already spoiled a lot of uh, nonsense, so, you know... You can tell how she deals with things. She goes to the drink. Um, and it's just a simple fact of... He can... Like, Angie wants... Angie wants Den. Den doesn't want Angie. Angie, like, lashes out and flirts with other men, hoping that Den will care. But Den never really cares because he's fine because he has his mistress, you know? 
and obviously then she turns to drink and then obviously it affects everybody else around her it's just it's a very tragic it's a very it, it's a it's a tragic story really yeah like the idea of how den can just kind of casually have his affairs and his mistresses and it's not like it's just like a one-time thing as far as we learn uh den has been like with jan for like several years you know it's just they're still married oh. Wait, wait, wait. Do you mean mistress as in she's the dominant one in that relationship? <laughs> no. Mistress oh, as right. in, like, affair. You know, I, I, and she's his I, I, wife. I, I, Jan is his mistress. I thought you meant that she was just, like, get on the floor, Dan. Bad like a dog. No. No. Keep your head out of the gutter. <laughs> um... But yeah, basically, Angie tries and snogs Lofty. I think she might have snogged him. And yes. then basically, I don't want to say he throws Lofty down the stairs. But he basically goes, I get down the stairs. He tells everyone to leave. And then he basically goes, Lofty, don't you dare push your luck. Which I'm like, Dan, you're, you're having an affair. What is it to you? Yeah, but, you know, it's about the reputation. It's about putting on a front. That's all. Well, that's yeah. why. Obviously, people who know me, I love Den. Like, I think Den is a great character who was ruined. Well, not ruined. He ruined his own career. Yes. Like, we obviously talk about this multiple times. But for people who want a brief synopsis, when they brought him back in 2003, like, he basically ruined his own career. And because like, he got catfished he, by a journalist. Finger in the mouth. Having a wank as Captain Hook. Yeah. Um, like, he totally killed his own career. And like then he just went, yeah, the actors I work with are fucking shit. And you're like, mate, you're like, I know you think you're above this show, but you're not above this show. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, he probably was in the 80s. But in the 2000s, you were not above the show. The yeah. show is above you then. Exactly. It does not revolve around you. And then basically they went, yeah, we have to kill you off. Which is brilliant to me how he was supposed to stay on the show. And they just meant, look, you have to be killed off. Yeah. Um, but they did They did, They did. did give him a good exit. As such. I do believe his exit, one of the strongest ones, you know. Like, it's it's all caught up to him. All his scheming has finally caught up to Den Watts. So, yeah. Like, he, he pretty much he gambled it all and lost it all. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, is that all, Piggy? Um, oh, where was I? Um, basically, again, Den, like, uh, my highlights for Den is he hops the bar in the very first episode. Which I always say to Ash, I wonder how many takes it took him <laughs> to hop that bar. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, I just imagine the bar, like, a man playing a rib on him. Or the one and all the rib is a joke. And basically just wetting the bar. So when he jumps <laughs> over it, he just oh, slips, gets bubbly legs. Um, uh, I do love how he's. Because, like, I will briefly run through all the main characters. That he's dead, or well, the, the ones the East Enders have basically pushed as main characters. So in the 80s, we had Den. In the 90s, we had Phil and Grant. Yeah. In the 2000s, I'm gonna say it was Max, but also Phil uh, and Grant. It was mostly just Phil. Uh, oh, yeah, point. Phil. Uh, Phil and I, I, would, I would say Max. The 2010s was definitely Danny Dyer or Mick Carter. Uh, yeah. I guess and, I guess you could go with that. And in twenty twenty three, it's. I mean, it, the, no, yeah, twenty twenties has been Ben Mitchell, really. Yeah, and uh, I would hopefully hope for it, it. It turns out to be George Knight, because oh, hope. I love George Knight. Yeah, I suppose uh, that's all we have. Is isn't that correct, Biggie? 
that's all we have. Do you want to do an award or are we leaving the awards out? Um, we can do an award show. We, we might like trim the fat on some of the awards. Some of the awards that are just jokes in the normal podcast. We don't need to take over. So I'm going to suggest uh, underrated. Um, let's just have underrated and who needs slapping down. Yeah. Um, underrated, in my opinion. We'll have to... I can't go to Ethel because she's not underrated. She's rated. Lofty, I would go for Lofty. Like, yeah. Because you know? even though we do see him, we do see him, he's not given much to do. It's like you're in a swimming pool. He's in the shallow end. You're in the deep end. Like, you never really meet, there. do you? Yeah. Huh? I was just saying, like, like you know, he's in the shallow. You're in the you're in the deep end. You never really meet. You never really get to figure out like no. what's going on there. Um, you're like in the deep end, struggling. He's yeah. there, splashing around his little duckies. Like he's happy as Larry, and you're like, oh bollocks, I regret this. Yes, um, I guess we should. We should really strict. I I guess we should stick to more like looser. Oh, more, less looser. We should stri- stick to more strict. Because obviously, if I had to choose, I'd give it to I give it to Lou Beal. Uh but she isn't like underrated. She is iconic, and I hope that through this podcast, you know. She she crops up a lot more because she is the quintessential matriarch. She is like the best like older character on the show for a long mm-hmm. time, and they haven't really been able to replicate like her that much. And they've tried. I know. How I'm gonna, I, know how, I know. I'm gonna piss them off. Um. Actually, they have replicated her. Do you want to know how? How? Ka- Karen Taylor. <laughs> ah, nice one. Um, but if I go for underrated, it has to be one of the obviously it has to be one of the lesser characters who hasn't really gotten to do much. Um, I am going to honestly, I'm going to give it to the detective because the, de- the detective plays quite a fun role in the show. Um, because he is, he's just, it's like, it's like he got lost. It's like he's some sort of like, like Miami Vice looking detective, you know, like he looks like Tommy Vercetti from GTA Vice City. You put him in like a flashy suit and he's like right in the, like in the campy eighties. Um, but like all he does, he just bugs everyone and he just, he just gets in everybody's shit. And I am sad that he didn't get to do more on the show. So whilst he's here, I will appreciate him. I must say that we're not... Um, well, I'm going to publicly just say this so Ash remembers this um, when he edits it. We are not taking into account if they're iconic or not. Because if we if we keep saying, well, Lou Beale's iconic, we can't nominate her. Th- that's bullshit. Like, yeah, well, I suppose more so we will... I will nominate Lou Beale on some weeks where she does a little bit less, but is still just as charming. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not taking it. She's had a massive role this week, so I can't really give it to her now. Yeah. But I will. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Because if we just take into account who was iconic and who was not iconic, people will get uproar in the comments. They'll be like, well, actually, Lofty is iconic. And you're like, all right. Um, five major things he did to impact the show. Yeah. He, one, he was there. Two, he was there. Three, he was there. Four, shut your mouth. Five, go fish yourself. And like, okay, thanks. Um, yeah. And it, the so, other yeah. award. Who needs slapping down, Piggy? Arthur. <laughs> Nicking right. that whiskey on. Nicking that whiskey on that poor man. That poor dead man. And giving Lou, giving Lou some chocolate. She's not got any teeth. And she, then he gave him then he gave him to Ethel instead. She can't oh, show I him either. Mention, I forgot to mention that classic scene. <laughs> um I the scene I I'll get on to it in a minute, continue. No, no, I'm I wrapped that up. No good. Who, who needs slapping down for you? For um 
Reg. Um, he needs slapping down, and he did why get does slapping Reg down. Um, <laughs> why does why does Reg Cox need slapping down? He's got such a bad reputation around the square. Like, I don't need to see Reg Cox to realize that he's that grumpy old fucking drunk who just gets in your shit and like stinks up your fucking fucking vodka like fumes up your nose. Like, from everybody's response, he clearly needed slapping down. Because he's just that old alcoholic who's just a fucking nuisance. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so Reg Cox, even though he's dead, <laughs> needs slapping down. <laughs> our first dead character on both podcasts. Very our true. first ever nominated well, I mean, dead character. I mean, character. Peach has died. Oh, yeah. Uh, whoops. Uh, our second then. Um... Uh, scene of the week for me is <laughs> it buckles me every time. Basically, Angie tells Ethel to to wait on Dan and tell him, "Look, do not bring Dan into the pub with the alcohol, please. We're getting it from the brewery." In quotation marks. <laughs> Ethel stood outside. Um, Arthur walks by. Arthur slaps the, the, the sarcastic slap <laughs> to Ethel with the chocolate. He doesn't actually backfist her. He just slaps the chocolate into her chest and goes, look, Ethel, have them. And Ethel's like, oh, hold on a minute. And she does a little granny run. <laughs> and like, oh, like, give, give Willie credit. He could not catch up. Like, uh. He tried his best. He could not catch up. <laughs> and, and she just runs off. And then you see Dan, like he's striving <laughs> one-handed. He's listening to a fucking... Uh, you're out of touch by all. Oh, like, oh really? Damn. That's, no, that's... he's not. I'm just oh. saying, like, that's what's probably right, playing in the right. car. He's listening to out of touch. He rolls in, he has the drink, and then he's awkwardly doing that. And you've seen that Grandpa Simpson me where he walks in, puts his hat on the coat hanger, yeah. and takes his hat off and walks out. He's awkwardly doing that with beer, and he's like, Yeah, yeah, Mr. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what I is your scene of the week? My scene of the week has got to be the scene where Angie and Lofty like have a kiss, and I don't know if it, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I'm ninety percent sure the time where Lofty looks up and sees Den, the music like stops, like it like it comes to a halt, and it's just like perfect comedic timing because Lofty he he didn't even know what was happening. He said the same thing to Sharon as he did. Like, Angie, he has no idea how he's gotten himself into this position. And he's just like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's it's tremendous comic relief. But yeah, that's my scene of the week. Yeah, um, so I guess we'll do the outro now. Um, if you want more of this, if you want less of this, let us know. Um, I hope you appreciate the classic extenders. I've been rambling for about an hour and a half now. Um, <laughs> nearly two hours, probably. Because um, I just had so much fun doing this episode of Classic Extenders. It's so nice because, um, just to give a brief context, although Modern Extenders is great, it is so much better to do Classic Extenders because, like, we can... I'm not, I know it's very tragic to compare to, but we can basically get in the car drunk and just start driving, like... <laughs> That's basically it. Well, it is the 80s. People did do that in the 80s and less was cared about. Um, like, that's basically it. We're the modern one where we have to put our seatbelt on. Yeah. We can't drink. We have to drive carefully. In the 80s, it's like, fuck it. No seatbelt. No, just alcohol in one hand. Hand on the steering wheel. Oh, I'm swerving. I'm swerving. Ah, it's fine. It's only a black guy. Who cares? I'm swerving. Oh, <laughs> I've just hit a granny. Um... So yeah, that's basically that's how I feel about the eighties. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just and so I fun. suppose just to add to that is obviously you know we, we're both born in the two thousands. We we didn't live in the eighties. We don't. We I doubt I doubt you've had you probably heard stories of the eighties, but like I haven't heard any more. Like I I don't have a scope of the eighties. This is what the eighties is to me. And it's absolutely hilarious to kind of build off what I think is the 80s off of 1985 EastEnders. Oh, it's just funny to me. Well, yeah, 
like people like people will always compare modern extenders to classic extenders and and this is just my thoughts you can agree or not agree you can't you basically can't compare the 80s to modern because they're two different shows they're they're essentially two different shows yeah yes it has the same name same theme same outro some of the same characters some of the same characters half of them are new but you you can't you you literally can't like it's just it's like having it's, a it's culturally a different battle. time mm-hmm. and that's yeah. why that's why i that's why i love the fact that we're able to do this because we get like i said we get a scope into 1980s right we get us we get to see what it's like at the start and obviously it's much more family oriented everybody's got a big family everybody's got a caring family they all have to work hard to like be together and they work hard like to stay together it's just it's so fun to see how it started and it's really funny to like see where it is now Mm -hmm. yeah and basically like it's much more like it's much more fun to do this i'm gonna be honest like i still love modern extenders but at least in the 80s you don't know where it's heading like yeah. you think you're heading in a straight direction but it but like the driver just turns left like he just turns left out of nowhere that's what it's basically like and to outro this i've been ash and i've been joined by piggy <laughs> hello and um, thanks piggy and basically follow up well uh, should i should i do the social medias or yeah, since we're the social agent, medias and um, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram as Watching Walford. No one has claimed the name. We still want claimers. <laughs> um, we won't even get mad. We will just change our name to Enjoyers of of EastEnders. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube, even though it doesn't exist yet. I don't know what YouTube is. Don't <laughs> know if it um, I suppose also, just to say, and just credits to you, Piggy, for hosting a belter of the first episode. <laughs> of the classic EastEnders podcast, or it might just be watching Wolford 1985. We haven't really decided yet. Um, but yeah, thank you, Piggy, for hosting. Uh, and uh, to quote Lou Beale, what has the world come to when it's Asians who found you? Who find you? <laughs>